today is very interesting it's an interesting subject and i actually wrote it for one of my um what's it called uni applications and for some goddamn reason they did not accept me and i but to be honest i wrote this written work 10 days before the deadline but i think my i think this written work was good it the uni just didn't like my grades and they just rejected me but i'm fine rejection is redirection yeah I'm just going to review and talk about my written work during this seminar we were talking about ai which in itself is a scary subject but there's this movie called her and one of the characters is uh, ai software so but it's just the voice the question was whether or not um you could protect this character under copyright let's get to the reviewing the judgment in dc comics and totally said the principle of copyright infringement of fictional characters in comics books shows and films the principle is based on the notion of substantial similarity in the u.s however the 2013 film her which is a movie challenges the totally test as to whether an artificial intelligence system named Samantha can be a character entitled to copyright infringement uh, copyright protection sorry as I'm reading this I just said I forgot words so you can see that I really did this in under 10 days yeah according to the Tolkien test there are three elements that must be satisfied for copyright protection first the character must be possess must possess physical and conceptual qualities the second element affirms that the character must be sufficiently delineated to be recognizable as the same character. The last element explains that the character must be especially distinctive and contain some unique elements of expression. An important case, I'm just re laughing because this was good. Like this was this was a good work for something that was done in the ten days. An important case of me the Tolly test. I didn't even put that in italics. Okay, that's that's why they're like this girl just rushed. It. Tolly test is Daniel's and Walt Disney Company. I think in the US they say Daniel versus, but in the UK we do we will say claimant and defendant case. We don't say claimant versus defendant. Uh, so Daniels and Walt Disney Company, the plaintiff characters of the Moodsters sued for copyright infringement over the characters of the movie Inside Out. The issues was whether emotions could be copyrightable characters. Okay, well, we're we'll just gonna stop there. I think from this judgment, you could be like, are they? Do they look alike? Personally, I I don't think they look alike. So let's see for each element. Okay. So the issues, blah blah blah. blah. Following the Tolly test, the first element was satisfied. What was the first element? <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Okay, character. Oh yeah, the character must possess physical and conceptual qualities. It can, however, be argued that the link between the colors and the moods may not always be consistent or may be culturally different. So here, the the way it was satisfied is because the physical attributes from the characters from the monsters is that they are I don't say teddy bears, but they're monsters, and depending on the colors that they have, it associates with a different mood, which is. It, it does satisfy and same thing with inside it out it could also satisfy um what's her name Ang well the anger is red blue is sad depressed green is disgust so yeah and you could also say to a certain sense um the care bears i think that's the word in english in french we say candy en tout cas <laughs> uh, the care bears the reason why it's different is because Although they all have different colors, they all have a, a drawing on their belly, so that's easier for them to like. It's easier for us as the viewers to distinguish them. Oh my God! If someone for someone who is colorblind or has that must be hard for them. So they can't always rely on the color. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. First element satisfied, and the reason why I said it can be argued that the links between colors and mood. May not always be consistent and may be culturally different. I literally asked my dad some. I asked my dad, "Oh, what do you associate the color red with?" He said, "Anger." I was like, "Okay, anger, cool." But some people might say red is love, passion, right? And then I told I told my dad, "Oh, what would you associate blue with?" And he said that blue, it for him blue is calm, 
And I was like, oh, okay, that I didn't see that. But for some other people, blue could be sadness. So it really depends. It's very subjective. The court affirmed in Daniels and Walt Disney, affirmed that the idea of seeing the colors to emotions was unprotectable. So the idea of putting a color to an emotion cannot be worthy of copyright protection. The reason why it's unprotectable, and I haven't read in depth the case law. I do not read the case laws in full. I'm I'm guilty. Sue me. But this is a general. This is too broad, and it has been done so much. Like I've said, the candy nose, the Care Bears. Each bear has a color that is associated with their qualities. Same thing with My Little Ponies. The ponies all have different colors. I'm pretty sure that is associated with something else. Um, or what's it called? The girl with the strawberries. Strawberry shortcakes. Shortcakes. What? You know what I mean. Um, her and her friends all have different colors that are associated with something else. So the idea, the general idea of colors um, defining other, defining each character based on the emotion or their qualities is too broad. So you can't control that. What, however, if it was very, 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 very niche down, so I don't know, like um, associating a color with, let's say, like if your first name is with the letter B and your color is blue, that might be more niche and it could, it might, it's not 100% sure, but it could be with your copyright protection because now you're, you're, how you're associating it might, <laughs> you can see that I'm a law student, I don't know everything, but I think this is why, you, you can't, the general idea of, of copyright is that you cannot protect an idea it, it's really more the execution that it is that is worthy of copyright protection and in here it didn't work okay so the first element of character must possess physical and conceptual qualities is it's like a check it is satisfied ish okay so the issue lies in the last two requirements the identified traits of the monsters characters have changed over the years as a result and were no longer recognizable and indifferent from the other fictional characters and that is very different and this is why i'm telling you that when it, especially with cartoon characters you cannot i think you as if i don't know who i'm talking to but it is difficult to protect when you're always changing something about the character that's why the simpsons who are 30 who have been in production for over 30 years still look the same they still look the same or same thing with Futurama it's not of course there might be an episode where they're in the future and they change but it's not it's not it doesn't stay that way for the rest of the um, of the series and this is difficult for in real life characters because we are always changing as human beings and you can't really protect that there's it's very difficult <laughs> I'm literally just like okay and the fact that it's indifferent from the other fictional characters. I would have to read the case law. I would have to read the judgment again, but why would I say again? I've never read it, read it in its entirety even once, so I don't know. But again, it's just, like there's so many, like I've, I've just told you so many examples of characters that have different colors based on different qualities. So that just shows you that they're, it's like not, it's just too general. You can't do that. Okay, so no copyright infringement was found. So, yeah. And here, it can be argued that the voice of AI, because we have to go back to the AI, the Samantha character, AI program amounts to physical quality. It does. Um, if we go back to the AI character, I'm sorry, I have, to say, I have my leg up, but if we go back to the character, the AI Samantha, for the movie her if we look based on the totally test does she have a physical and conceptual quality here voice someone's voice is considered uh, as a physical quality um, however the voice interpreted by the renowned actress Scarlett Johansson is not characterized 
sufficiently to be recognizable as the same character. Look, Skylar Johansson has been in a handful of movies, and if I tell you the, if I tell you her name, I think the first movies that come into in your mind is probably the, one of the Avengers movie. It literally shows you that it's not like it's her most recognizable. I mean, some people might say, "Oh my God, yeah, the girl from her," but. It's just, it was just her voice. That's the thing. It's, it's just the voice. As the actress has worked on multiple successful projects, it would be unlikely that her voice would be Im immediately associated with the role of Samantha. Yes. In addition, the character of Samantha is not sufficiently detailed to be distinct from the general virtual assistant, such as Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa. Because there are so many, there are so even Siri. So it's not... It's not distinct enough. It's just, it's too general. Samantha does not satisfy the element of the Tully test, thus it is unlikely to be protected by copyright. This man, <laughs> Naxim, argued that the Tully test is not adapted for the concept of copyright infringement in the modern media where fictional characters are more than the physical appearance, immutable traits, blah 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 blah. He rejected the narrow approach and proposed a broad concept which highlights the general elements of a character. That is very cool, sir. Thank you. But then again, when you come to the voice, what is... Is it the tone? Because we can always change the tone. Is it the accent? You could say that accent doesn't change, don't change. But after a while, like, I, coming from myself, when you're in a new environment, your accent can change a little bit. I have had friends tell me that my accents have changed ever since I've moved to the UK and I don't think so but it can, it is it can happen obviously Sky Jones is older than me so I think her accent doesn't really change. and also actors always change their accents depending on the role that they get so so that is I reviewed this man's argument okay thank you as a result Samantha may be entitled for copyright protection through two alternative tests the character delineation test and the story being told test. And I think here this is where I fucked up. So maybe they did not like my written work. I think I messed up one of the <laughs> character one of the tests. Or like the the basic principle of the test. One of the okay. So the character delineation test established in I not put the name. Nickel and Universal Pictures Corporation explains that the more developed a character is, the more likely it is protected by copyright. The judgment in Warner Brothers Picture and Columbia Broadcasting System set, set out the story being told test where a character is protected by copyright if they are essential to the storytelling. And I think this, this is where I fucked up. I'm not sure. I would like to review it, but I'll probably put something post-production, but I don't think this is what it meant. And this is my issue with some of the U.S. case um, case law. Sometimes it's just not clear. It's just not that clear. I'm re I feel like I'm I'm do I'm in House of Anubis and just decrypting what they're saying. Oh my God, House of Anubis was such a good show. If you if you used to watch that show, please let me know. I was obsessed. We're, we need to get back on track. <laughs> so the judgment in Metro Golding Mayor and. American Honda Motor Co. challenged the story mental element. Okay, wait, first of all, I didn't even... Okay, wait, let me finish this paragraph. Yeah, I can see why they did not accept me. Oh my god. <laughs> it was how that the characters... The character of James Bond failed the test. However, the defendant's commercial was substantially similar to regarding the theme, plot, mood, and characters. Thus, the copyright owner was entitled to the preliminary injunction enjoying the defense's commercial. Samantha is not a developed character is not a developed character as it is simply a virtual assistant, therefore the character delineation element is not meant. However, there's no plot without the character, meaning the story being told test is satisfied. So okay, let's let's debunk this whole paragraph. Okay, so the character delineation test is like I said, the more a character is developed, the more likely it is to be protected by copyright. Like I said, Samantha is just a voice. So there's no there's no other element that could distinct her that can make her very, very, very recognizable. And I'm still going to use a cartoon 
So let's use someone else. Um, uh, okay, let's use Dora. Dora, she, you, you can close your eyes, and what do you see with, with Dora? You see her shorts. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's pink shorts, and or orange top, or it might be an orange top and pink. No, it might be a pink top with orange. Top. Okay, it's not this, but it's more so. It's the uh, purple, purple backpack and her weird haircut and her i think does she have a bracelet i'm pretty sure she's having a bracelet and the map on the side so these are if you were to see someone with a short t-shirt and a black uh, and a purple backpack you would probably say oh wait this is this person mimicking dora or something like this so yeah now with the voice it's difficult to like it's difficult to describe if, I feel like if you're not able to describe a character, then this is the issue. I think you understand what I'm trying to do. You can't do that with that, a voice. You can't do that. What do you say? The voice is blue? The voice is... Like, you could say feminine voice, but then again, it's too broad. Like, anyone can have a feminine voice. Okay, and then as for the story being told test, I'm pretty sure it is if if the story... Like, if, the char if you cannot have a story without the character, then I I'm pretty sure this is it. So I'm pretty sure I was right. But yeah, so the story... Did I even see what the story is about? I didn't. Okay, her is about a man who is having trouble writing a novel, I'm pretty sure. And he is somehow using AI, this AI system. But then he's... As he's having a conversation with this AI system, he's falling in love with her. So... If you, you remove the AI, so if you just say this man is struggling to write a novel, where the story goes, because then it's like, he, where's the falling in love part if it's not with the AI? The AI character Samantha is very it's essential. Reason why I used uh, the James Bond case. The reason why James Bond is a interesting case is because why did it fail so i'm pretty sure i missed i am missed something up but i'm too lazy to make the research right now so i'm gonna put it here but if we use the james bond test for like using the Tully test or even the character delineation test how would you characterize how would you describe james bond he's a spy he has an english accent he's always well dressed he is I'm pretty sure that people who really are into that James Bond universe would be able to give you a, pr a proper description. But that just shows you that even within the three different tests, so the Tolly test, the character delineation, and the story being told test, you have a different outcome. In conclusion, <laughs> it is unlikely that the character Samantha and her is entitled to copyright protection. However, the principle of copy on copyright and protection for fictional characters demonstrates the different outcomes depending on the test. The more distinctly a character is portrayed from the physics to the mannerism, the easier it is protected through copyright and the less dependent it is on to the storytelling. Wait, hold on. Why did I say this? The less dependent... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand why I said the less dependent it is on the storytelling. Because the reason why... Is, I don't know why. <laughs> I, I Actually, I do know why. It's because you're not relying on the you're not relying on the plot to make a character distinguishable if you know what i mean if it's if the character is already distinctive through what they're wearing it's difficult to okay yeah the reason why is because when your when your character is already distinctive through the marriage into their physique if you're taking this character out of context people will be able to recognize it whereas if a character just has a white t-shirt and a regular pair of jeans if you're just putting there out of context you would not you would just think that this is something else so you want i think ideally you would want to not rely on the plot of the story for example harry potter the one element that everyone knows is that he has this scar on his face if you are taking harry like he has these round glasses and their scar you're taking his face out of context people will be able to say oh this is harry potter right but if you're just taking his face without the scar you would say okay this is just a guy with glasses you know what i mean so 
you would be able to dis distinguish Harry Potter outside of the plot. Okay, a okay, an interesting example I have is the Totally Spice. So for example, I'm, I'm just throwing out ideas, but that doesn't mean that they are probably already protected by copyright. I'm just, this is, at this point, this is just a conversation. My example was the Totally Spice because although they have the, uh, like their spy costume, when they are in their everyday school or shopping environment, they all have different outfits. So at that point, where is, what is distinguishable about them? If you're just like seeing them like out of context, would you be saying to that space? You would probably recognize the haircut, but then again, the haircut might not be sufficient to be distinct. It could just be any other uh, characters or the characters from 16. But then again, even the characters from 16 have that one unique outfit. It's always, if you have that one repetitive act outfit throughout a season, you're, it's easier for you to recognize and separate each character whereas if you always have a different outfit it might be a bit difficult but i think this is pretty much it you can play this game pretty much when you're watching a show big would this be distinguishable i'm i think the general rule of thumb from what i'm seeing is char cartoon characters are easier to be developed and also it's really time consuming imagine every episode you have to, you need to make a new outfit it's just easier when it's, like it's just easier for you to just have that one outfit for the entire series whether it's one season or like 20 seasons then in real life characters where every scene it's probably a different outfit but then you run the chance of not being being harder for you to to protect your character but yeah but then at the end of the day it's not always about protecting your character right maybe sometimes there's something more important but then again this raises this, this question of AI and just in general like in real life characters and how they could be protected by copyright if you want to share something the mic is in your face I hope you liked the video it was very chaotic very unstructured but I hope you liked it bye